Welcome to the introductory video for the Bacterial Gene Expression Practical for PS2002. The aim of this practical is to demonstrate that the LAC operon is regulated both by suppression and activation. E. coli can use different nutrient sources. Uh, glucose is the most common one, but it can also use lactose, even though lactose is less energy efficient to, to use. The lac operon has several important components. Uh, one is the cap operator, where the cap protein binds. There is the lac operator, where the lac I will bind. These are all part of the promoters, which are in front of the uh, lac Z and lac Y uh, and lac A genes. The LAC-I inhibitor is a product of a LAC-I gene and it binds to the LAC uh, operator. When it binds, it inhibits uh, the RNA polymerase from making the uh, genes for the lac Z. However, in presence of lactose, this inhibition is removed and uh, RNA polymerase can bind Another important feature of the operon is a cap protein that binds to the uh, cap operator. Uh, this protein binds when there is low level of glucose and thus high level of cyclic AMP. When it binds, it helps recruiting RNA polymerase and therefore increase gene expression. Thus follows that when we have both low glucose and low lactose level, the lac I inhibitor is inhibiting the expression of lac Z, and therefore we have no beta galactosidase expression. On the other hand, when we have low glucose and lactose is available, the lac repressor will be uh, removed from the DNA because it's binding to lactose, and uh, the cap protein will be binding, recruiting RNA polymerase, and thus leading to high level of expression of a beta galactosidase. On the other hand, when uh, glucose is uh, high and lactose is available, uh, because there is a low level of cyclic AMP, the cap protein is no longer binding to the DNA, therefore it's not recruiting at high level RNA polymerase. So there is a lower expression of lac Z, thus allowing the bacteria to choose to prefer the, the use of glucose over lactose. For the purpose of this experiment, some work has been done for you in the background. So the E. coli have been grown in a normal complete medium overnight. Then they were centrifuged down and resuspended in minimal media that doesn't contain any nutrients, just some amino acids. The resuspended bacterium have then been aliquot into three different tubes. To one, lactose has been added, to another, lactose and glucose, and to the third C, only water has been added. This addition has been done approximately an hour before your practical, but you should know the time that it's been done. Your first task is to take an aliquot from the three flasks that are at 37 degrees and uh, transfer it to 4 degrees, thus stopping the growth of the bacteria. You will then carry out the assay. For a beta galactosidase assays, you will be doing in duplicate. To each of the tube, you will add some bacteria, some chloramphenicol, which is an antibiotic to uh, kill the, uh, the bacteria, some toluene to uh, solubilize, partially solubilize the membrane. Incubate it for 10 minutes, and then you'll add the substrate ONPG, uh, which is a substrate for beta galactosidase. Yeah, you incubate that again uh, at 37 degrees and then you stop the reaction with sodium carbonate and measure the OD at uh, 420. You will also take another sample to measure the number of bacteria this is, that are in your sample. And for that you uh, take a sample straight into a cuvette and measure at OD 660. 
You will then uh, repeat this uh, assays about 30 minutes after you started the first one. So it's important that you keep a record of the time you start. It's not important it's exactly 30 minutes, but it's more important that you know how much time is, there has been between the two assays. The principle of the assay is that beta-galactose days will break down the substrate ONPG into galactose and ONP, and ONP has an absorbance at 420. Um, your job is to uh, do, take the measurement of uh, both the beta-galactose acid assay and the uh, concentration of uh, the bacteria. It is important that you express the beta-galactosidase uh, activity in terms of the number of bacteria that were in the tube. Otherwise, the number of activity, the amount of activity is rather uh, meaningless. Once you've done all the calculation for the two time points, you should try to interpret the data and see if it fits our theory on how the LAXA operon works. Some health and safety advice. The E. coli that you're using are not pathogenic, but use them with care. Chloramphenicol is an antibiotic and can be cancerogenic. Toluene is both flammable, toxic, and has been reported to have risk to the unborn child. So uh, use gloves, use care. Should you come in contact with any of these compounds, please uh, talk to uh, one of us.